Hi everyone, Delfino Aguilar here, SVP of Wholesale Production and Kind Lending with a very special guest, Greg Phillipson. Greg, thank you for being on with us today. Of course, my pleasure, man. Yeah, no, it's really, I'm excited to have this one. I've been looking forward to it. We've been planning it for a while now. And, you know, Greg, you're you're a top agent at Keller Williams here in San Diego, um, you know, right. ranking the world, uh, top agent in East County in San Diego. You do a lot of business. I know you're really, really busy. Um, so thank you for your time today, man. I really do appreciate it. No, oh, no worries, man. Yeah. Yeah. So we were talking before this that you do you do these quite a bit sometimes. So thank you for your time. You know, talk to us a little bit about like you and how you got started in the business. We're talking about that briefly. So let's learn a little bit about you. Yeah. So I uh, so I'm 46 years old, um, yeah. <clears throat> about 17 years old. My, my mom's been a broker since the 70s. Nice. And, um, you know, when I was about 17, I, I took a real interest in it. I started asking her to take me on caravans. I started asking her to take me on showings just to kind of see if this was something I wanted to do. Yeah. And at 18, I went out and got my license and dude, I just, you know, I basically thought I'm going to go a hundred percent balls to the walls. Right. Yeah. Right. And see if I can make this thing work. My mom took me to a real estate seminar when I was 17. Wow. Um, I got to meet some guys that were up on the panel. I got to talk to them afterwards and, listened to some motivation stuff, read some books. And at yeah. 18, she pretty much locked me in a room, gave me a crisscross directory and told me to co-call eight hours a day, six days a week. Wow. So that's how you, that's how you get it, right? That's pretty much what I did. I did that for 10 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and how important, you know, was that cold calling piece to your business? I think it was the most important thing. You know, yeah. it, it, it taught me to, kind of uh, handle rejection. It taught me how to um, uh, just kind of get in a, a right frame of mind yeah. throughout the calls from the first call to the last call to be consistent. Yeah. Um, it just taught me, you know, through um, the lack of motivation some mornings, it taught me just to kind of keep your commitment and just do whatever it took because what was happening is those numbers would start to work out. Yeah. And even though, you know, a lot of times I'm thinking, man, I'm making these calls. This doesn't even work. And then all of a sudden, boom, it started to click. And then everything started to become very duplicatable. Right. Yeah. yeah. After a while. After a while. Yeah. And, and so, great. Yeah. So that, that dedication got there to build your team. How, how big is your team right now? Um, I, you know, I really don't have a large team. Right. Um, I have a lot of staff members, um, but not a lot of salespeople. So it's it's me that goes out on the listing presentations. Um I have a full-time assistant. I have a okay. full-time PC. I yeah. have a part-time assistant. And then I have a part-time runner. Wow. Um, and he pretty much runs errands for me, fix yeah. locks boxes, uh, meets appraisers. Um, and then I have a, um, a buyer's agent that I pass off leads to. Right. But she's independent of me. She's not on the team. She does her own business. So so all the volume that you're doing, you're really, you're really doing that just kind of yourself right by yourself right yeah so how do you keep yourself organized for everybody that's super busy right now because you know we're in the rates are all times low home bios yep. are soaring you're busy how do you keep yourself organized for those of people that are watching you know i found for me man just getting up super super early yeah that, that is i would say the majority of the time i work off of a very rigid schedule yeah to where you know i'm up at 450 um and just you know do some meditation in the morning yeah. do a workout in the morning listen to some positivity and yeah. then boom i start my day around you know 7 15 mm -hmm. and um, as long as i'm if i'm very consistent in my routines yeah in that morning few hours i get more done than most people get done in you know two full days two full so. days yeah so so we didn't I, I we didn't talk about this but i want to spend just like one minute on this because um I'm a big morning person too, right? And yeah. I think, you know, in the morning, it's quiet time, exercise, meditation, all that stuff's really important. And a lot of the successful people that I've encountered in my life do exactly what you do. Like, exactly. And I think for to take people's careers to the next level, it takes a hard time to wake up early to stay to that, to take that regimen, right? Like waking up early, doing some exercise, having some quiet time, meditation, whatever it is. That I'm really glad you said that because. A lot of people don't do that piece, and, and that's a critical piece. So, great. We didn't talk about that earlier, but I'm glad you shared that, man. Well, let me tell you why, though. Mine yeah. came out of necessity. 
Mine didn't yeah. come out of just because I read it in a book. Yeah. I started having like just to be vulnerable on this thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and and yeah. explain what happened to me is yeah. uh, about four or five years ago, out of nowhere, I started to have panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Yeah. I'd never had them in my life. They just came out of nowhere. Right. And I found that if I had my morning routine and I was working out that I got rid of those. Right. And so for me, it was a necessity instead of just something I read in some book. Right. Right. Yeah. That, and so ever since then, I've been able to regulate it. That stuff doesn't, I don't have those anymore. It doesn't yeah. happen to me anymore. Right, so. right. Yeah, and, and I think that's a good point because sometimes stuff like that take, makes us all better people, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, would you say that having this routine in the organization definitely helped you increase your business as well? Not only doing that, right? Dude, it, it, it so I was stuck. So last year I did 90 million in sales. Yeah, um, yeah. Awesome. And I do about 70%, thank you, bro. 70% listings, 30% fire sales. Mm -hmm. Um, I was stuck for many, many years. I was stuck between 30 and 40 million. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just within the last five or six years, I broke through that and really started to climb each and every year. Yeah. And I think it's because of that morning routine and just my whole mindset shift. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that actually. Cause I yeah, think that's going to, that's going to help a lot of people to be honest with you. And, and I, I appreciate you sharing that. I think, you know, um, doing so much business comes with a lot of volume. Like right now in the industry, everybody's hitting record months. Our customers, you know, our competitors, um, their borrowers, everybody's taking advantage of this. Um, you know, you must get hit. You're doing so much volume. You must get hit to with buy a lot of brokers and loan officers like, Hey, Greg, can you send us your business or can I be your lender? I know you have a, a preferred partner who's, you know, a mutual friend of ours who's an awesome guy. Um, yeah. and, and, but what, what would you say for those of the people that want to reach out to an agent like you that would make them give give you time to them, right? Like, is it, hey, I want your business or how can I help you? What are some things that makes you give them a shot or you would have in the past, you know? I, I, it's always been for me the same. It's like title officers, title reps. It's like yeah. uh, insurance people. You know, I, I, I have all of my people I've worked with for 25 years or so, right? Yeah. yeah. But the ones that I still listen to today are the ones that come in with something that's um, maybe something that could help my business or, hey, Greg, I was thinking about you the other day. This is what I think, um, you know, I think you should maybe try this or I think this might be helpful. It's helping another agent up north. Maybe it'll help you. I don't expect any business from it, but I was thinking about you and I just thought it would be helpful. Right. There's several of those guys around that do that on a consistent basis. And I know they're doing it because they obviously prefer to, you know have me send them some business. Yeah. But there are a few of them out there though, that I think are just doing it just out of wanting to kind of bless me and help my business also. And yeah. I think if yeah. you have, if you, if you truly have that heart of helping, right. right. You'll be able to break through any realtor. If you're just a numbers guy and you're just trying to kill the numbers and, Oh, I got to talk to this guy because he's doing so much business yeah. and you, and you treat me like just some cold call. It's not, it won't work. I don't think it'll yeah. work with any of us. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's some good tips. I think um, some people come on strong sometimes. Right. And, and yeah. that can kind of shine you away a little bit. Right. You know, be consistent, be consistent, be yeah. consistent. Yeah. So consistency, yeah. discipline and consistency is something that I keep on hearing, which is which is great, um, Greg. And I think, you know, the Sandy, like let's talk specifically like we're this is going to everybody in the United States, but specifically okay. your market um, in San Diego, your top agent. Right. So you see a lot of things. Where do you see, um, you know, what are some trends that you're seeing in the in the real estate market right now? It's it's a really it's a crazy marketplace in that, you know, it's very, very frustrating for buyers right now. It's yeah. really hard as an agent to keep buyers um, hanging in there with you. You know, I, I have one buyer that uh, I've lost seven uh, offers. Wow. So far. I mean, we've written seven offers over list, phenomenal offers. Um, you know, 50% down, no appraisal contingency, and we're still getting our butt kicked. Yeah. And so I think what I'm noticing right now is every client is taking much more communication daily, much more care, much more uh, explanation. Yeah. And everything is just, you got to be a little bit more thorough in today's world than you had to be just a year or two ago because everything's happening so fast and 
buyers are reading messages online and they're always, you know, should I go to Redfin? Should I do this? Should I do yeah. you, you got to engage your client all of the time to keep them as a client. That's the toughest yeah. part right now. Yeah. And I think that is, um, you know, social media, you touched on social media real quick. You know, you have your website, gregfilson.com, right? I yeah. see your yeah. update, other sources you do. Um, do you get, is most of your business referral business? Is it, is it, do you get a lot of um, activity from your website, things like that as well? Yeah. So I, I, I can tell you, I keep track of all that stuff, man. Yeah. So yeah. out of the 156 transactions I did last year, mm -hmm. 101 of those were direct from repeat referral business. Okay. Mm -hmm. The rest were from my marketing. Wow. And I, I do vast, you know, I, I, I mail to 9,000 homes a month. Right. Um, I do a ton of uh, signage out in neighborhoods. I do a ton yeah. of marketing, um, but the majority of my business is from past clients and repeat and referral. Right. And I think, you know, the relationship piece is extremely important, right? You have a strong relationship with your lender that you have now. Um, yeah. We talked about earlier too. And, you know, in, in this business, um, it's all about relationships. I always tell like you and I have closed loans indirectly, right? Through, yeah. through, through them. And I'm yeah. going to keep your name secret because we're going to be a guest on here too. But I, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I think the most important part of our business, the relationship piece and, and Greg, I can see how, I mean, like I, I don't even need to buy a house, but I want to buy off a house. I buy a house off you right now. You know what I mean? Like it's just that you're so personable and the relationship piece is so easy. And, and, you know, in your view, that's, is that a critical piece to have with your lender as well? Like your, your mortgage broker and lender? For sure. Yeah. Oh, we're, look at, I'm very, very good friends with my mortgage broker. Yeah. Like he's, he's somebody that would come to my wedding. Yeah. He's somebody that, um, you know, I, we yeah. talk almost yeah. every single day. Like we're, we're, yeah. we're, you know, best friends relatively, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He's one of my closest buddies. And I think that, it's important. My title rep is one of my best friends also. Yeah. Um, you know, all the people I work with really closely within this, my mm -hmm. escrow lady is my, uh, my mother-in-law. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, all of those people are really tight knit and um, they go out of their way to make sure for my clients yeah. that they're extremely happy because they know my business runs pretty much all referrals. Right. Right. That's awesome, man. And I think, you know, I love hearing this because it reinforces throughout our careers and what we're doing here at Kind and the people we partner with is all about the relationships. And you're just, you know, you're, you're redefining that in the sense that you keep your, keep it kind of close. And I really appreciate you sharing that, you know? Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so yeah. great. So the, the last, the last thing I have for you is, um, you know, what are some, what are some things that, you know, do you really care if a mortgage broker, um, a kind of a lending question to kind of end it, do you really care like what lender they send it to? on your side or as long as the broker you trust your lender your your broker 100 percent to send it to whoever he feels is the best is the best outlet for that borrower uh, I, yeah I, I trust him to make those decisions i mean yeah. that's again i don't even have to think about those things that's when awesome I send it off, when i send it off to him the only the only piece of advice i give him is i give i give him what type of um personality my client has yeah, <laughs> I give them the timelines that we're on because there are some investors, right, yeah. that respond quicker with approvals. Right. And those are the only two things I give them and I let them run with it. Right. Right. Awesome. OK, great. So listen, man, I, I, I really appreciate it. Um, your time today. Like this is one of the best ones we've we've done. Your your information is awesome. You're really busy. Um, and, and thank you, man. Like what, what the, the information you shared is very valuable to everybody listening. And Thank you we really bro. appreciate it, man, for real. No, but hey, my pleasure. Is there any uh, last minute question or anything else you you want to ask? Yeah, no, I think I think we're good. I wanted to I wanted just to make sure that everybody knew how to get a hold of you, right? So okay. GregPhillipson.com is your your website, right? And you also have different Instagram um, at Greg Phillipson as well and uh, Facebook as well, right? So yeah. So thank you so much. You you know we've done business together indirectly. So I thank you personally for your business oh, over, pleasure, the, over the years, man. Seriously, and if and you know follow us here at Kai Lenny to hear more on Instagram and Facebook as well. If you want to learn more about Greg, you can fill him up, uh, follow him on the sites that we said earlier, and he's also on LinkedIn as well. So Greg, thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate your time today, man. Thanks, bro. Take care. All right, take care, guys. Thank you, everybody. All right, bye bye.